The ways of God are not the ways of man. When the young Patrick was captured by some kind of pirates, it was the art of remote preparation. The Lord prepared him both by the solitude of Schlemisch, where he was a herdsman, with no one but a hidden teacher to teach him anything, and by the fact that he was hearing the Gaelic language and observing how the Irish behaved. Preparing him therefore for what was to be his mission. And we have this strange vision that he heard the Irish saying, beckoning to him, young man, return. Pope Celestine initially had Palladius consecrated for mission work in Ireland, but he died after a year. And the young Patrick, who by then had almost miraculously managed to escape from captivity, had been formed in the company of saints and great men of God. He was in the circuit of St. Jarmanus of Auxerre, and he went certainly to the island of Lerins, still a monastic colony to this day, where the likes of St. John Cassian had been and had left the traces there of his own gleanings from the eastern desert, Egypt, which by the way St. Benedict wanted read before Compline. So when he was there he would have come across something of the best of the east and the west. And so when he came, sent eventually by the Pope who had him consecrated, he came with this baggage, which was also fairly monastic in tone, which would explain partly how Ireland became a very, very clerical church based on the abbot, based on the enclosure of the monastery, which actually was fairly flexible because they didn't distinguish between the active and contemplative life as we do. They were ready for any good work. But they were anchored in this clerical life based on contemplation, the monasteries. The abbot was hugely powerful, but he did institute bishops and divisions of land, our present diocese. We still have the old names actually. And this was to then be by capillary effect, the grace of God coming through to what until then was a dark land of paganism and the druids had great power they had power over life and death and they probably were in some kind of contact with strange forces which would give them even miraculous powers so there was a lot to be dispelled and the serpents that St Patrick is famously attributed with having expelled from this land were coming back in the form of new age and what also might be directly hostile to his work. One wonders what forces are at work in the forced impossibility of receiving the sacraments for months on end. I wonder what St. Patrick thinks now for my years in glory. Where is my labour? The Irish themselves are shutting out the light of grace. It's strange that the phenomenon of multiplication and growth in Ireland up until only a couple of generations ago was something out of this world. It was hugely fruitful. The Irish were massively faithful. Against all odds, actually, we have the testimony of Oliver Cromwell, nonetheless, that he couldn't actually do anything about this faith. He reports back to the authorities that he couldn't manage to convert them. The people came out at him 
from their doors and their hovels with beads in their hand. He couldn't get these beads out of their hands. The Irish were faithful. We have this expression to take the soup, but they wouldn't. They rather preferred famine than lose their soul by apostatizing and leaving the Catholic fold, which somehow they knew to be the only true one. And we forget that it meant not only martyrdom with regard to the likes of those who went to the gallows, actually it was even worse, it was being hanged all and quartered for treason, but also the thousands and thousands and thousands who went into exile driven into the likes of the Barbados. But they had their faith. And many other testimonies of the heroic nature of that faith. One remembers how the family rosary was everywhere. It was a peaceful land. But the police had a very different life about 40, 50 years ago. Progress, life without faith, without religion, defended by the authorities. If people only knew the advantage of having grace in society. I heard from a nun, now deceased, how in the past the religious orders, the church, helped and supported the state. One thinks of the thousands and thousands of vocations which led to education given very cheaply, hospital care given very cheaply, care of the poor very cheaply, but now it's all state funded and not always with the same warmth. And these recent accusations are out of context, people don't really research the facts. The nuns were very good to little children. Mass burials were everywhere when there was poverty and huge death in every culture. The period we're talking about, we can't transpose to another period, another century, what is presumed now. The money just wasn't there. But these young girls who gave themselves to the Lord should not be criticised for what they're guilty not of, because they did what they could. You need to know the facts about what is driven at us by the media. The fact is that grace was everywhere in Ireland and it did have its effect. And it's left its effect, for instance, in the kindness and nobleness that's still there. I heard from somebody who knew what she was talking about that the beginning of the tip from one direction to the other was when initially innocent television came in. There was nothing awful on it because it was well controlled. But then the very fact of having another presence, another culture, another noise in the hearth made a difference which got worse. But the very fact of having it there was a big difference that people didn't realise initially. It was the beginning because once the natural sound of the fields and the rhythm of time yields to this sovereign noise which invades all and has other messages far too powerful for the simple soul, then we're in trouble. But we're far more in trouble now because that same means of preaching, the virtual pulpit of the screen, is becoming anti Catholic. This is the island that we have. St. Patrick, come back and drive again these serpents from this emerald isle.